Can everybody hear me? Okay, yeah, cool. Well, before I get started, Joe said, okay, anybody who wants to, you know, be on the committee, come on, let me tell you before you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> because when I said, yeah, back in 2020, I'll join, yeah, I, I thought I was going to be like a worker bee. She had me, bam, right in. I'm like, what in the world do you have me doing? You have me speaking. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So you don't think that you, you know, you can be like, I'm gonna carry the supplies, I'm gonna put stuff up. And next thing I know, she said, So now you wanna talk? About what? You know, so anyway, it's good. It's good. So today if you hadn't noticed, my word is remember. And when she gave me that word, I was like, Oh, that's a tough one. What do I talk about? And then the Holy Spirit started talking to me and said, I want people to remember how to pray to the Father. And I'm like, wow. Because we say the Lord's Prayer very rote, very mechanical. Our Father, you know, you know, we get to the end and that's it. But do you really think about what's in between the commas, okay? Do you really take time to understand what is in between the commas, those phrases? He said this specifically to the disciples. This is how I want you to pray, okay? So when I looked up the word, remember, it's not a passive word. This is like the biblical meaning of remember. It's an action that brings the power of Jesus into our life. Again, it's a word that brings the action, the action of Jesus into our life. It's not, it's not like, oh, something I gotta do in the past. It's a daily thing. It's something daily that we have to do. So everyone, again, those are the Lord's Prayer, but do we really know, do we really make it personal to the Father? Do we take that time to do it, or do we just go from like and say it in like 10 seconds, and then we're done? So there are two versions, one in Luke and one in Matthew. I kind of went along with the one in Matthew, because it had all the words that I wanted. So I was like, okay, this is cool. <laughs> so the, end, the New King's James Version is called the Model Prayer. Now we call it the Lord's Prayer, but in the uh, New King James Version is called the Model Prayer. And let me read it to you just for a little bit. It says, Our Father in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now sometimes we say, some people say debt, some people say sin, some people say trespasses. So it gets a little tricky in church. You're like, who's gonna say what? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm used to saying trespasses, so I still, I still do that. But let's think about the words between the commas. What does God want us to remember? So let's take our Father. When we say our Father, he wants us to remember that we accepted Christ and he became now our father. He is our Abba, he is our daddy. We are his children. Okay. I don't say I'm adopted. I am his child, he created me in my mother's womb. And he loves us and he wants for us just like any parent on this earth. He wants the good for us. He has our back. He knows our needs, our fears, our wishes. He wants a close relationship. So, in praying, I call him Abba. I call him Daddy. Yeah, I have a daddy. He's still alive, be 91 soon. But he is the one that created me. And I want that intimate relationship with him. So when I talk about him, he is, 
I realize that I'm an intentional creation. Psalm 139 says, he knitted me, he knitted all of us in your mother's womb. And he knows who we are. He had count, he knows the number of hair on your body. He has written every day of your life from the beginning to the end. So he's your father and you are his child. So you gotta think about that. So I, I tend to, to stick with that for a little bit and then I move on to the next set of words, the next set of phrases, which would be, who art in heaven? It's a little bit different than the New King James Version. But yes, he is our father, but he's also majestic. He's also on the throne. Who he is is he's king, and he's supreme being over everything. He created everything. I just went through with Patrice, Martin, a uh, uh, community group, and we went through the book called Jesus Over Everything. Oh, good. It's so good. Jesus is over everything. He is eternal. He is infinite. He is all powerful. He is holy. And he is being praised 24 7 in heaven. 24 7. Revelations 4 8. Let me get to that. That's where I bought my phone because I think it'd be a heck of a lot faster. Hmm? Oh, okay. Am I spinning too much? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to spin. Should I put you out there? Okay. Okay. So Revelation uh, four eight, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, "Holy, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come." And at the end, they also are praising God. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you are created. You created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So you gotta remember, yes, he is our father, and you can have that intimate relation with him, but remember who you are praying to. He needs, when you, you come in awe of him. And yes, he is still your dad, but he is also king. He it needs to be exalted. So when I think about who are in heaven, I think about home. Heaven is home for me. That's what I hope for. That's what I long for. And he is preparing a place. I'm still. I can speak it. If you have it away from your face, I can turn it up. It'll pick you up really nice. Okay. So in John, and I can actually talk without it. But, and then John 14 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If, not, if it were not so, I would, would have told you. I go to a place and I prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And it goes on from there. So he has prepared a place for you. That's home. Heaven is home. Heaven is home. It's also a place that we will be honoring him. Also, I already said that in Revelations when I just mentioned that, but we will be there too. All nations, all tribes, all tongues, all ethnicities will be there praising the Father. So when you think about who art in heaven, we're gonna be doing that. And yes, he is dad, but he is also king. He made this universe, and he's made so many more that we can't even see. So we need to think about that. Okay. Going on from there. Hallowed be thy name. Lord wants us to remember that he is king. Now we talked about this. He exalt, we exalt him as king, as king. He is over the world, over all the universes. And, you need to, and I focus on 
attributes of God, his holiness, he's infinite, he's good, he's glorious, he's sovereign, he's omnipotent, he is worthy. His name is not to be taken in vain. Now, that's a big one for me because it bothers me every time I see a movie, it takes the Lord's name in vain. TV shows take the Lord's name in vain. It is, I grieve every time I hear it. They use his name as a curse word in songs. Think about that. Here you have the Father who is in heaven, sitting on his throne. He created us. He loves us with a love that is just unbelievable. And you have people So I apologize to him. When I'm on my knees, I apologize. I said, Lord, I am so sorry about this. And I pray that people will get to know who he is. So that stops. So when we take his name, we take his name majestically because he is a majesty. So, Question, when you're praying to God, what names do you call? Father, he has so many. Anybody? Lord. Yeah. Father. Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Elohim. This one. There are so many names that the Father has. There's one time I'll give you an example. I was talking to somebody, and they said, they kept saying, you know, putting Jesus in, you know, like, a, like it was a comma, that Jesus is, and I'm like, and I kept looking up. So then, what are you looking at? I'm looking for Jesus to come. So you keep calling him. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and, I, and then they just went, huh? I'm like, yeah. You keep, you keep saying his name. So I'm expecting him to come. And then they stopped because they realized what they were doing. Now, unfortunately, this was a Christian. See, sometimes we don't, we don't know what we're doing. We gotta, we gotta make sure we understand what we're doing and what we're saying and how, and that relationship with the Father, the closer you are to him, the less of that you will do. The less you're more in awe of him. Okay. Moving on. Thy kingdom come. Remember, God wants us to remember that he is bringing his renewing authority to earth. He's coming back, yay. And he's going to be reigning on earth as king. His kingdom be one of grace and love and peace and joy. He will have an international community here made up of people, and I've said this before, with from every tribe and every nation and every tongue. There'll be no barriers. None in this kingdom. God's kingdom is partly here now. Think about it. Every one of us has the Holy Spirit in us. So there's a little bit of heaven right here. We talk, and that was mentioned before, yesterday. So that was when Joe was saying, we didn't know what we were going to be saying to each other. But every time a person accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, the Holy Spirit is in them, a piece of heaven is again here on this earth. But it will only come in this fullness when Christ returns. So when in praying, I think of thy kingdom come, I'm thinking of a just and loving king that's going to be here. And also, this was God's intention. This was God's intention when he created Eden. Eden, he wanted, when he's going to return, he wanted that at the beginning. It didn't work out that way. And like what Joe was saying, you have this little bit and this little bit, but you have all this in the, in the middle. But this and this, Genesis and Revelation is going to come back. He's coming back. And he's going to have what he wants here back on earth again. And I praise God for that. 
Amazing. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will, his good and perfect will. Not our will. Look what it's done. Our will. The way he wants again eating to be is going to happen. He knows what's best. What we have to do, and, we, and we've already done, but we're still working on it. We're always renewing. And we're always renewing. We've got to release our will to him. And you know, sometimes that's got to be like 10 times a day. Maybe more. Because we want to do what we want to do. I want to go this way, Lord. And God says, no. Take it back. Okay. All right. Focus on his agenda. His agenda, all you got to do is read his word. It's in there. Focus on his word. This is his mission. His will will be back here on earth the way he wants it. Good and perfect will. And that's what I do when I start praying about it. I start thinking about his good and perfect will. Anybody have any other thoughts about what that phrase means? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Anybody ever, ever given any thought to that? I just think about how it's God's will in heaven. That there's not question, hesitation, struggle. It's just, it's just what happens. It's the natural order of things. Right. It's the way that things are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Anybody else? The next phrase in between the commas, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is teaching us how to depend on God daily, not for tomorrow, daily. So it's always important to say this prayer really in the morning so you can go about your day depending on him. You gotta remember that he is our provider. Again, he is over everything, and everything comes from him. Our help comes from him. Our food comes from him. Our clothing, our shelter, the ability to work, ability to exercise. The way we look comes from him. So when you pray this prayer, pray it daily, and depend on God to meet your needs. because. Tomorrow's not, it may not be, it changes, it changes. Things stored can be taken away. Things stored can be taken away. There's a really, really good verse on that one. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, that's 19 through 21. So I'm praying this, I have to come to this, I thank God for taking care of my basic needs. I, and I ask myself, Lord, because this is where you can be even asking God for what you want. I ask God, I want to live comfortably. I don't want to be rich, but I don't want to be poor either. Okay. And there is a very good, let me get that. It's from Proverbs 37 through 9. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove false heart, falsehoods, falsehoods and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. 
Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. I don't want to be rich and I don't want to be poor. I just said, God, please sustain me in a comfortable life. I could take a you know, little vacation here and there. You can work that in, that'd be great. <laughs> I even asked for the room. I said, Lord, you know I love blue. I can only be, you know, little different shades of blue that I like, you know. I kind of get too far into my thoughts. <laughs> Next part. And forgive us our trespasses or our debts or our sins. Remember, bring your sins to him and ask for forgiveness. Only God can release you and give you the freedom that you need from your sins. It also says that if you, uh, you have to forgive your sinners first. Mm -hmm. Turning the story down. No sin is too big. Christ died on the, on the cross for all sin, small to large. Small to large. So when I pray this, I thank God for dying for all of my sins, the past, the present, and the ones that I don't even know that are gonna happen. But he does, he knows them. And I also pray for those who don't know Christ. I ask the Lord, please, for those who don't know you, that they come to know you, and that they, their sins can be forgiven. The second part of this is the tougher one as we forgive those who trespass against us. Sometimes we gotta do that a lot, or maybe a, one particular person or whatever. But remember, this is what he wants us to remember, forgiving brings freedom and deliverance. Because that person is going along going, la, 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 I'm living my life, and you're like, dang on that person. I remember this, I remember this, and the person's like not even knowing that you had this, this offense against them. They don't even know. I forgive them, and this is what I've done. Now, you might want to do this in a room, nobody will see you, because you might think they could, that you're crazy, but you might have a, have a chair, boom. And you have, and you're sitting in a chair, and that chair is empty, and you imagine the person that's in that chair, sitting in that chair. And maybe even call out their name, and say, whoever, I forgive you. Make it real. Make it real. Do it in your closet. Do it in your hand, but make it real to that person. That yes, I forgive you. You hurt me. You did so and so, so and so, so and so, whatever. You can only do that through Christ. You can't do it alone. You gotta ask Christ, Holy Spirit, please, Lord, help me with this. But it does bring freedom and deliverance. And if you can restore relationships, then please restore them. But sometimes that other person may not be accepting. That's okay. You move on from that. If you forgive it. God knows in your heart that you've done this. And if the person doesn't accept it, that's all right. In Matthew, in 6, chapter 6, fourteen through 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses or sins or debts. When you read that, it's like, oh, that's pretty heavy. You know, that's pretty heavy. So you want to be close to God. You want him to hear your prayers. You want to have peace in your life. And you must forgive the ones that have hurt you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Remember, we are not immune to temptations. Yeah, we are Christians, we believe in God, we love him, but we are not immune to temptations. We have to fight this battle because Satan knows that we are with Christ. And because we're in Christ, Satan wants to ruin our lives for us. So there may be temptations. So you have to fight the battle in Christ, with Christ, alongside of him. In Christ's strength. That you fight the battle by praying daily. There are spiritual battles that we do not see. But God's angels are all around us. Fighting for us. Psalm 91 talks about that. So when I pray this, this part I come to, I ask the Lord, please keep me in your word. Remember, when you, when you know more of the word, then you can fight them. And then I also again pray for those who are not in Christ. I pray that part. The last part is that it says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And again in Revelations, it says, John is saying, then I looked and I heard the, the voices of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the numbers of them was 10,000 10, times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying aloud, with one voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. It's all in Revelation that he is going to be returning in his power. When I read, when I say this part, this is years ago now, the Lord put on my heart Say, remember what a thimble looks like? And for those of us who were old enough to know that we had, we had, you know, sewing classes, which they probably don't do anymore. <laughs> but they used to have sewing classes, and used to have thimbles. If you know anything about me, I am not a sewer. <laughs> I'm not a sewer at all. But this thimble, the Lord said, think of this thimble, look how small it is. He said, not all the kings, the presidents, the queens on this earth, their power cannot even fill this symbol up. God's power is so much greater. So much greater. So when you think about this and you think, and you look on the news and you look at what's going on politically, think about this. Their power is in here. Not even half full. This is, it's a good visual to think about and to know that God's power is much bigger. So I concentrate on each word, I concentrate on kingdom, I concentrate on power, and I concentrate on glory. So, in summation, remember to make your prayer God-centered and not self-centered. Remember to focus on God's glory and not on your problems. The Lord's Prayer, or the model prayer, is still relevant. Make it a personal prayer from you to Him. Remember God loves you. And remember, God is returning to renew. God is returning to restore. God is returning to refresh. You got to remember to return and repent to Him. And when you pray, don't do it in front of men that you be boasting. Do it in the space. It's just between you and him. Okay. In your booklet, page 20.
I know that because I know that not. <laughs> so I can say that. Is a reflection question. Basically, is saying, is there any part of that prayer, any phrase within the commas, in between the commas, that's speaking to you? And if so, why? Take a little time. Thank you.